Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today I'm going to take you inside the most exclusive con experience in the world. Welcome to VinciCon. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. <laughs> Jokes aside, I recently had Ninjon, uh, Sam Lenz, Miniac, or Scott, Ben Cantor and Uncle Adam all here in my house. We hung out for the weekend. We were painting. We were listening to music. We were watching some funny videos and sharing stories. It was a great time. And what was really fun about this one is everybody kind of brought their own project to work on. So I thought what I would do here is take you through each day as we hung out, how everybody progressed, what they were doing and working on, and just kind of give you an inside look. So it's a little bit of interviews with everybody and stuff like that. Uh, I'll be back every so often, but uh, I hope you enjoy this. It's a little bit different video, just a little fun insight into uh, us hanging out and paint jamming. As always, if you can ever get together with other people and paint jam, I highly recommend it. It motivates you, it's an easy way to get feedback, and frankly, it's just a lot of fun. Hold on. Okay, now we're recording, John. Oh, hi, Vince. Hi. What are you working on there? Uh, I'm working on a rat head. You're working on a rat head. You want to unpack that for everybody? Why are you working on... Everybody else has miniatures, John. You have the head of a miniature. What? Why? The head that's the size of a tennis ball. It uh, is big, yes. It's mostly horns. Uh, I'm starting my Golden Demon project for Golden Demon 2025, and you always start with a thing that's going to give you a little bit of momentum in the project, get you excited, or you screw it up and you can just quit. Um, and so that's why I'm going to start with this rat head. And I primed him uh, light gray because I wanted to get to a more saturated tones quicker um, instead of having to go over black and really have to build those up as a black will desaturate. And then once I've established these bunch of weird uh, zones of color, then I can start building up and going to uh, some mid tones, some highlights, and then see how much I need to reestablish those darker tones. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Now, this is for Vizic. He's a big boy. He is the biggest of, of rat boys. Yes. Yes. So you're going for monster category next year. Yep. Uh, okay. Now, do you always paint your golden demons in this kind of sub-assembly situation? No. Uh, typically, for a regular standard size, you know, Space Marine single sure. model, I, I try to have them either entirely together or as close to as much as possible, especially working with light um, and color that I have consistency across the whole model. But this dude... It's he's got too many areas that I just could not hit a brush in if I would have um, kept them all together. And so this head, all these horns cover all the way across his back. Right. And so all he's got all sorts of texture and like wounds and stuff on his back. You just couldn't get to. Also, you have the issue of with a larger model, just simply being able to comfortably hold it um, because he is probably this tall. So he's like the size of a bottle of soda. Yep. Um, and you you can't grasp him and really get a good grip on your hands in a lot of areas. So he's broken down to quite a few parts and uh, can always glue them together later as we go. If I decide I don't need him into so many sub assemblies. Very nice. I mean, I think that this model might be, I don't know. We're going to have to figure it out if this is classified or not. Mm -hmm. Like if we, maybe you have to put a big blur box over the whole thing. Yeah, sure. But well, let's figure that out later. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't really had to, time to think about that. Uh, uh, the, level, the level of classification of this. Yeah, I could always just... Don't worry. The way I shoot videos, no one will be able to see what it actually is anyways. So <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> Great. So what are you working on, Ben? Uh, this is a, uh, a large uh, a large uh, orc boy. Yes. Yeah. This is also, theoretically, for some contest, you also worked on a little doggy. Right, there is a dog. I don't know if that dog is... I don't know what the uh, refinement level is on our uh, dog collection here. So I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm done, but I don't want to be the uh, least refined dog in the case. So Yeah, you, you know, there's a lot of famous artists. My wife accidentally put together the a collection of some of the most famous artists in the world painting tiny dogs. But yes, <laughs> uh, so you're working on this orc. Uh, it's a thing with lighting, as you are well known for. You love the lighting. It's kind of your thing. Uh, so how are you feeling like you're, you're progressing on here? You showed up with quite a lot of, you know, progress already made. How, how are you getting on? I think it's pretty gross right now, but maybe we can ungrossify it. Okay. Taking yeah. taking a bunch of Vince pro tips about uh, where where we've gone wrong. It's a process. It's a, it's a journey. All right, and then uh, there's still more to do after this. 
So you got about uh, five months. How are you feeling about your time frame? Uh, I'm feeling so good about my time frame. I'm feeling fantastic. I love it. Yeah, I feel like I could just go ahead and, uh, you know, just send, we can just send it from where we are right now. We can just kill ourselves and show up and show up in March, and we'll be done. We're, We're on track, sales. Mr. Sam Lenz. Hello, friend. Hello, how are you? Ah, great. Thanks what for having me. What are you working me. on? I'm painting this uh, Cult of Paint miniature from their upcoming Kickstarter. It has sort of an Aztec feeling to it, a very large headdress. Um, I picked it out because I really like the motion. And also, I know that Cult of Paint, you know, someone is going to be painting a box, you know, some cover art. And I want to deviate from what I think the normal choices to make on this would be. Sure. So I try to theme her more around a death specter vampiric kind of elemental so very uh pale flesh surrounded by you know dark and crimson objects got a little uh ejected forest going on or kind of a cutaway style to the top of the plinth and to enhance that i i have some of this uh bracken from gamer's grass so i want to add like little like fronds of uh mm-hmm. ferns and stuff sure. all erupting around this so she'll kind of be sitting within all of the uh, the plant matter going for a very warm non-metallic metal gold on her uh yeah those are my theories and concepts i will uh, say this is you've you've made some interesting color choices like yeah. it's it's fascinating this was a this is a miniature it's been interesting to watch take shape because you have this like very gray skin when you started with this it looked insane i mean it's, let's just like, it had an ugly phase because you were, like, on... Yeah. It was, like, grays and bright oranges when you laid down, like, your base coats, right? Kind of industrial, almost. And yeah. yeah, like, the the dark reds, you know, it's going to get up to a nice, pure, kind of dragon red tone. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it had a super ugly phase. And I also, I'm, I'm getting lost in uh, like the skin I wanted to read being very light. So I'm operating right. more in mid-tone and highlights. But I don't have a lot, like... You don't have a lot of anywhere space to, to go. Play there. Yeah, like yeah. much brighter. So I've been going back in with uh, runic cobalt, which I wanted a, a colder flesh, and it kind of came out warmer than intended. Just throwing that into some of the mid-tone areas, like you can see where her hip sinks in. Just trying to play on the with the mid and highlight mm-hmm. areas, and it gives the the shadows more meaning, and the, the darker areas framing her skin have more impact that way as well. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm after. Very nice. I love it. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Adam. How are you doing? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Hope That's correct. Well. Superman does good. You're doing well. That's indeed. very indeed. Very well done. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you are not painting anything because why? I don't like to paint anywhere else other than at home. Yes, you're you're very specific about your painting. I, you paint a lot. Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. and it's always in my hobby space and all my stuff. And mm-hmm. it's yeah, that's you're persnickety about it. Uh, yeah, oh, persnickety is a good word. And uh, you, sure, sure, you've uh, but you're doing something still. What yeah. are you doing? Uh, well, right now I'm messing around. I am sort of uh, brute force trying to teach myself some three D modeling. For um, I have an FDM printer. Uh, a 3D printer that prints in three dimensions. You probably Crazy. Heard of these things. I'm going to get one of those four dimensional printers when they come out. Yeah, that's it's coming soon. And um, so, uh, like, I have I'm working on terrain projects, and so I've been buying STLs and then printing terrain and doing things like that. But I thought, well, but what if I was to try to make like bespoke specific things that I need for projects that I'm working on? So I'm teaching myself Tinkercad, which is a free browser-based piece of software you can use. And um, I'm just kind of going through and working on making some, like, bases for, like, a, you know, I've got, like, a, a thing that I'm going to put on top of this that's like a store-bought piece of terrain. But mm-hmm. rather than trying to scratch build an MDF base and put cool stuff on it and greeblies and crap like that, I can actually just design it in this way. You've got, like, a little sci-fi vent and some, like, little, you know, it's, it's, it's like the doing, it's like, you know, detailing the side of a spaceship. What does yeah, all sure. that crap mean? Yep. Have you ever flown on an airplane... You don't see Greeblies all over the outside of the airplane like you do right. with spaceships and Star Wars and whatnot. And so, yeah, I'm kind of doing a little bit of that so that when I get home, I can take this and print it, and then I can start making a piece of terrain out of it. And it also, it's simple enough that it's easy enough to learn, and then it kind of just gives me a jumping-off point to hopefully get better with that. I may actually build some models, too. I brought um, 
some uh, Age of Sigmar, not the big giants, but the smaller giants. Baby giants. The baby giants. I'm going to bring, I'm going to do a spearhead of the, because there's the spearhead where you just get the three baby giants. So I I brought that kit, so I might work on that at some point too. Very nice. Hello. What's, what are you working on, Scott? Everybody else, one model. Or maybe 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 two, maybe a couple. You know, Adam's assembling a couple. John doesn't even have a whole model. He's just got a head of a model. <laughs> but you showed up with, like, an army. What's happening here? Uh, me and Eon's battle have an army painting challenge going on right now, and he is way ahead of me, and so I'm catching up for uh, being a slow painter, working on some Mandrake, some Incubi, Incubi, if I'm not to pronounce that, and also Drazar. Very nice. Uh, so how close are you on this? We've all... We've all watched your progress with this army. We know it's something you love. Uh, how, how close do you feel you are to hitting that magic 2,000 points number or whatever it is? Well, I know for a fact. My buddy who knows how to write 40k lists came over and wrote me a Dark Eldar list, and I am far from complete, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. I also noticed that these guys are very... Uh, uh, let's call it uh, fall themed right now. Mm. They're very orange and yellow. Yes. Uh, what's 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 happening there? Is that going to be like their primary color, and then you're gonna you know de- like block out all the other details in something dark? Like, what's your general plan here? Yeah. So obviously, mandrakes normally like to lurk in the shadows. They like dark things. But my dark Eldar army lives in the desert and has like a, an affinity with the sun. So I thought my version of mandrakes could be more like elemental fire demons. And nice. so I want their skin to be orange and glowy, and then that'll have dark robes. And I'm not sure what to do with the hair yet. I feel like if you were an elemental person, you had hair, that would just burn right off. So Or, the, sure. or the hair could just be more like elemental fire or, or something. Oh, yeah, or more of that, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure on some of the other details, but definitely black black robes uh, below. Well, we'll see if you, uh, if you crack the code. My first day was really all about building up. I worked on this guy right here. Uh, this was just a fun little academic bust I got from uh, Dave uh, Powell at uh, Nova, and I loved it. It looks kind of like Asterian um, from Baldur's Gate, and I thought it was really cool, and I just wanted to paint it. So I grabbed myself a selection of six different pinks and greens and yellows and just sketched out some skin and, and stuff like that and saw what I could do. It was just a lot of fun to warm up. This was like the Emu's bouche uh, before the painting. Uh, it was just a little bit of like, uh, getting the, the, the muscle memory going again, getting warmed up. Right. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I think it came out pretty cool. Can I give you camera direction? You can give me any camera direction you want. Okay. Well, I'd like you to start by painting the dogs. Okay. <laughs> Go to, uh, dog face, mm-hmm. tilt down to other dog face, and then you can pan back to me. You've just seen the highlight. <laughs> Very nice. I think it was fine, but like these dogs, though, they're pretty great. Pretty great. How goes your actual figure? Uh, I think it's actually it's actually really interesting. Um, the the this fig this has changed more in the past like let's say thirty six hours mm-hmm. in terms of a lot of overall things that are happening that has in like the past like week or so. Mm-hmm. And it's mostly due to you know just uh, hearing what people are reacting to, and then also uh, you uh, I was I said to somebody before I essentially I was cooking before with. Uh, with uh, uh, soy sauce, and now I'm cooking with like uh, quadruple black market MSG, whatever this thing is. That's right, got that golden high flow, that's right. It's very actually helpful. I'm usually not a fan of random ass paints because I think it's, uh, you know, not a real thing, but this has actually really helped in terms of a uh, very tiny little area of it just kind of uh, increasing the saturation, which is important for me. So, okay. do you feel like you will get to a good place by tomorrow? I mean, what's a good place? Like, You're going to be happy with your work. Sure. I mean, I was already. It's a process. Sure. Who, who cares about how I feel? <laughs> I mean, you should care a little, right? I mean, the process is going to continue regardless of my feelings, so feelings seem a little unnecessary and excessive. I gotcha. The machine continues. All right, very yeah. good. Hi, John. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. You're, uh, you're continuing uh, with your process on head. Yes. Uh, tiny, tiny head. Uh, I've not done massive, massive horns. That is... That has not been touched yet. I'm working on his beardy, his little uh, Billy Groats Gruff beard. That mm-hmm. is my uh, inspiration. So we're going to go from like a, a rusty orange to a deeper um, kind of charcoal color and then out to a kind of bluer, gray, wispy uh, old man beard at the bottom. Okay. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a journey. Um, I'm happy-ish. It's so tough when you're like, well, there's not a lot done, so... 
I don't know how happy to be with myself. I don't want to get cocky or confident, but I also don't want to be like, it's okay or down on myself because then I lose all like momentum and motivation, which is the most important thing on a massive project is to just keep working. So, Well, at this point, you've got progress. You've started, right? The, the yeah. seal is broken. Yes. And that's what's, that's what's really relevant. I mean, you are going to spend a good weekend on this face and head. Whether you get the horns done, we'll check in tomorrow and see. Yep. Okay. But either way, then the question will really be, can you maintain that, right, as you yep. move across the rest of this massive surface area? Right. Yeah, that's it. To, to refine, I think if the rest of the model looks is finished to the level of this face, um, I'm going to be... Lock it in now. The trophy's yours. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a bit of swagger going into, uh, going into Golden Demon. But that is such a massive hill to climb, literally a, a hill of a model. Um, when there's so many large swaths of land across this figure that there's not as much interesting stuff happening as there is condensed into this face and head, um, to figure out how to navigate that's going to be a whole journey in and of itself because it has to still show your control over the median constraint, um, but keeping things visually interesting. But not too interesting on places that aren't supposed to be the main focus. So then you start getting in your own head and... Uh, second guessing every decision well we'll see tomorrow if you can make it just interesting enough just enough scott what's going on buddy i'm still painting these mandrakes but i'm feeling really good about them uh made some progress on you know one thing that's great is that i don't have all my tools and when you don't have all your tools that limitation breeds some kind of creativity or sometimes you just brute force stuff that's right so like the i did these really weird like teal hand flames and had I had all my convenience tools and whatnot, um, I might have gone for an easier solution that was quicker, but not as like vibrant and beautiful. But because I just brute force sticks, I got the time because I'm just here for three days. I got a really fun and wacky result. Um, so that's kind of like a, a special uniqueness to to VinciCon. It's like you're stuck here, you don't have all your tools, you have a limitation. You know, I've chained you in the basement. There's no escape. There's You'll no never escape, get out. No escape. And so you have to have a kind of a creative solution. And sometimes you can just paint for a while and make it look good. And that's not what you normally do when you're army painting, right? Right. You're taking, you're going as fast as you can with the most efficiency as possible. So yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I might not finish both units, but um, I really like what the Mandrix look like. We will check in with you tomorrow and see exactly how far you've gotten. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Uncle Adam, you have still not put together any giants, but you have made a lot of progress on your, your 3D sculpty thingy. Yeah, I made a piece earlier that was just, a, like yesterday, that was just kind of a base that I'm going to print at home, and I'm going to use it as the kind of jumping off point for uh, a sci-fi terrain thing. And then today I've been working on a totally just sci-fi terrain thing that I'm going to print kind of whole cloth when I get home is the idea. And so I'm just going through and detailing and tweaking. I've got some illustrations that I sort of did that came from some pictures I took off the TV of like from a video game piece that I thought was interesting. And so I'm just sort of using it as a jumping off point. I had the smart idea to make a little orange cylinder that is mm -hmm. 32 millimeters across and is the height of a space marine. So I have the general idea of like what's the scale and am I, you know, if I made this too big or too small or whatever, that kind of stuff. I added a ladder over here before into the thing so that I can, you know, people can climb and, and get up on the top in a game and that kind of stuff and everything. And I wanted to see, like, okay, well, what's that in scale and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure that most sculptors generally who are doing stuff for games do that right from the get. But it kind of came to me this morning. I was like, oh, I should do that. So right now I'm just uh, kind of honestly tweaking some trim around the edges and stuff and then I'm going to figure out some sort of hatch to put on the top of it to make it look like there's a purpose to it, but that's pretty much about it. I might build some giants later. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Area that I'm interested in. All right, Sam, we can't, you've, you've switched pieces. What's happened? <laughs> yeah, we're all tag teaming this Infinity model. Uh, I'm the third person to uh, come across it and uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but a video is being made about this and our different applications so yeah i have an hour to uh jazz up an infinity model and you are painting after myself and mr ben cantor correcting all of our horrible mistakes i knew it'd be great to go first because then like no part of the final thing will actually be my work and that's great but i can still claim credit well you went first and painted the head mm -hmm. i was like all right that's right 
Make That's some it. Choices. I made hard choices for all of you. So you're you're doing about an hour on this thing, but of course yeah. you were also working on your other boy over there. Yes, yes, the boy who's a girl. Or girl, I guess. Sorry, yes. yes. From uh, Cult of Paint, there's a Kickstarter coming up. This kind of Aztec themed uh, jungle demon. Yeah, I'm having fun with it. I it's gone through a severe kind of ugly phase. Uh, like I was saying, and it's it's been a balancing act of midtones. I just put a wash over the gold, so those need to come back up, you know, to be uh, vibrant mm-hmm. again. Probably gonna airbrush over the. Uh, I don't know what to do with those feathers, but uh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and then I have like final whites to bring in onto the skin. I, I got some up on the elbow, then I attached the head, and they disappeared. So I was like, oh, okay. It's um, always a back and forth. Yeah, and then the uh, little plant matter. I just started, you know, getting like a darker and brighter side of those going. I'm going to chop the, the leaves up and plant them around. The first thing I did on day two was actually fix my old pirate bust. Uh, I had mentioned that before in my digital roadmap video. Uh, let's see how I did. Here's how it came out. And here was the original digital mock-up I did. Uh, pretty close. Not quite exactly where I thought I, I, thought I was going to end up. But, you know, the brush on miniature is always a little different. But I'm very happy with the improvement, managed to clean up a lot of stuff, and I think we got to an overall much better place for sure. Uh, I love this bust. It's one of the things I'm most proud of that I've sort of ever done. And uh, all in all, this came out, I think, uh, pretty darn well. Hi, Sam. Hi. How you doing, buddy? Great. It's uh, right, That's better. Oh, there you go. Yes, get that, get that light from below. Funky lights. The fires of hell. Uh, so you, are you done? I think she is done. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to attach the foliage because that's going to come apart in transit. Not sure. to get on the airplane yet. Um, I want to put some final whites on it, but I feel like it's just absorbing into the model or something. Sure. <laughs> sure. It's like, I put layers of white onto this so many times and you know, you have to go so thin, but it's just like kind of uh, sponging it up, but I'm really happy with, with where this got to. Um, yeah, yeah, the uh, kind of chords I was trying to strike with this, personally, I've, I've hit. It's a very unique take on the thing. Are you, or do you think it's going to end up being very different than some of the other paint jobs uh, people put on this? I think so. I mean, that that's the question. That's what I'm excited to see. It's always it's cool when you know uh, other talented people are going to apply their imagination to something. Sure. So... That'll be interesting to see, and I hope mine is unique. It's a it's a very unique vision. I think it came out awesome. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. Adam, you're assembling something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. I am working on the Maw Crusher, Man Crusher, whatever Crusher mob. For... Something's being crushed. Something's yes. definitely being crushed. No, no two ways about it. Uh, which is basically the spearhead for uh, Age of Sigmar. So there will be three... Uh, of the small giants, which sounds like a what's a small giant? What is that? So I believe that's oxymoron. Oxymoron, yeah. Yes. And um, anyway, yeah. So I'm working on those, and uh, I just started actually a little while ago. How do you find the hottest kit of 2005 as far as assembly goes? I don't know what that means. It's like it's an old kit. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's old. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I just knew that the <laughs> that the. Uh, the spearhead was just three uh, giants, and I'm like, well, they should go together pretty quickly, and they should also paint up pretty quickly. And uh, after doing 378 different uh, Skaven for the Skaven spearhead, I thought maybe it would be nice to do something a little bit quicker and easier. So um, I just went to my local FLGS, which stands for Friendly Local Game Store, um, and uh, they... I think he ordered it actually because it didn't have it in stock. But I, you know, I knew that there was a box with three in it. Although it's not called Spearhead nor Vanguard, it's just random box of three giants. It's just box of three giants. Yeah, box of oh, giants. So yeah, um, I'll eventually, maybe, probably start painting these. Maybe on Twitch, unless I want to do something else on Twitch, because then painting stuff on Twitch takes a lot longer. You know, when I did them, I did them all with oil paints because they're so big. You should you should do that. I think we need to get you into the oil paint uh, action there. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, maybe an oil wash sure. or something like that. I, I'm just saying. Ones, no. That's how it starts. That's right. That's how it starts. We get you in there, a toe in the door. Sure. All right. Very good. Excellent. I look forward to seeing the mob. Scott, what's going on, man? Just trying to finish up these mandrakes, working on their 
uh, admittedly crazy color hair. So this is, these are the two yet be finished over here we're looking at right now, right? Uh, the four, yeah. Yes, but then you have those over there. Yes, the five. Yes, that only need to do their weapons, and uh, which should be pretty simple. I'm not going to go too crazy on those. And then some, some, some kind of desert floor base work. Okay, very good. Now, did you accomplish as much as you hoped this weekend? No, I really didn't. I okay. think I think last time I walked up with a unit of 10 skeletons, that was like 90% complete. And then I finished it in day one, and I was like, man, I'm fast. Uh, but these mandrakes were nowhere near as finished as those skeletons were. So I got kind of caught up in the slog of finishing these 10 dudes. But I did oil wash those guys and clean them up, and they look really nice and crispy. You got one unit done. Yeah. Uh, not done done. Need some highlights. But, um, I mean, yeah, progression everywhere. feels good. That's right. We're moving along. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked about how many more units you have to do. What I want to talk about is how much did you fight back and forth on this color scheme? Because it seemed like your real struggle with this was in identifying the different elements on these guys versus the rest of your army, right? Like you had an established color scheme and then these dudes are so different mm -hmm. from all the other figs that it then threw a real, real wrench in the operation. Yeah. Well, I, I hope to think that it's not so different. It's just like a very exaggerated version of it. So sure. they have like a, a yellow color that got kind of blown up to a, an orange gold. And then obviously teal is the spot color, but it's like dominating the model on these guys. And they kind of warm colors, so it's like kind of like they're kind of like elemental, you know, desert gins, you know. Like, sure. so I kind of want to make them look like that fantasy idea by just exaggerating it. But I don't know; I'm not super convinced. They look kind of crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy is good for an army. You need eye-catching things. All right. Well, I look forward to the eventual video where they are done and we get to see them in all their glory. Me too. Right on. Just oh, I'm ready, John. All right, we're still working on head, yep. uh, and uh, we've made progress, though. Teeth are done, right? Teeth are done. Little beard I, is done. Eyes are done. Little beard, which I thought would not be a large project, but ended up being a very compl complicated project, is done. Turn him toward me there. Give me, let's, let's give people a look. There we go. So that's done. And we started on the, the little horns. Obviously, we have a couple of giant horns to Just do. Just a few, yeah. Um, but first I'm just kind of figuring out my, my color scheme as I want the, uh, as I think we described it earlier in Neapolitan ice cream effect mm -hmm, sure. or a chocolate, a vanilla, and then a strawberry Yeah. Uh, for each horn. And I'm going to start with just a wet blending, uh, with a big fat brush to get in the tones and then inevitably get stuck in the weeds and every tiny wrinkle and crevasse of these, uh, of these horns. Okay. So here's my question for you, John. You showed up with just a piece of a model. Mm-hmm. Now, we also all painted a model for you. Yeah, this was really my plan all along. Right, so we painted a model for you. You didn't paint it. Yep, correct. You showed up with part of a model. Yep. Okay. Uh, first of all, it feels like you've run some kind of scam on us. That's number one. <laughs> number two, did you get as far as you wanted with your piece of a model? No. <laughs> I wanted the head completely done by the end of this, or at least... All they had except for the bojangles, the skulls and the little rats and the bells sure. that are hanging there. He has a lot of bojangles. Um, but the, the whole head and his face took me one day, and I assumed that. Then I thought I would get through um, the beard, the teeth, the eyes, the little horns, and then start the big horns in day two. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Um, and then day three was hoping to get all the way or most of the way done on the big horns. So it was kind of a couple of log jams and doing other fun things here. Absolutely. You know. All right. Well, too. I look forward to you uh, moving on from just head to horns. Thanks. And uh, I'm going to be on top of you the next couple months to make sure this is done. Many painting hangouts will ensue. We're going to get you. We're going to get you working. I appreciate it. Right on. All right, Ben. Here we Fire are. Fire orc. Day three. Yeah. How do you feel you've gone along? Uh, I was explaining to uh, uh, Scott that the objective is to get balls deep in the Golden Demon, and, you know, we've gotten in at least a few more centimeters. Good. Glad to hear it. It's a very typical American uh, me metric imperial mixing there. Absolutely. So you, uh, you've you really been spending most of this time, like, refining things, shaping light, stuff like this. Is this how you approach your Golden Demon stuff in general? Like, you start rough and then hone in hone in hone in hone in and that's like 90 percent of your time is that is that refinement tightening process 
this has definitely been the very typical process, but I think that every getting everyone's feedback like three X has definitely like uh, supercharged the uh, the rate, the rate of uh, I don't know the the rate of refine not even refinement like the the rate of adjustment. Sure, I mean it is nice to have. I, I will say it is the best advantage to be able to just pass a fig around to other painters and be like, what don't what am I not seeing? And yours is such a complicated lighting scheme; it's just hard to keep it all in your head. So you know, there you go. Yeah. Uh, are you feeling confident that you will get the entire piece done by the time we get to Golden Demon? I'm, I'm hoping to get this piece done by the end of the year. Wow. Or maybe by the end of January. Okay. Or let's settle with February. But definitely not by... We the moved end. a lot on that very quickly. If, if I'm still working on it in March, it's a huge problem. For okay. Me. So no hotel painting this year. I have a firm no hotel painting commitment. Absolutely. Very good. I will hold you to it and we'll see you... At uh, Adepticon in March. <sighs> the rest of my day two and my day three and everything, and even a little bit after everybody left, was working on this. So this uh, is the Witchhorn uh, from the Brom series from Mindwork. Um, this has always been one of my absolute favorite figures. I love this figure. Um, there's both a full version and like the full body and the bust. I have the bust. Um, I, God, I love this thing. And I wanted to do something really unusual. Uh, so I decided to go for a sort of red-orange skin, make her very demonic, which I think is different than a lot of the interpretations I've seen out there. And then I said, can I make the purple, a purple cloak with orange skin basically compelling? That is a triadic color scheme. Turquoise is technically the other part that balances that out, which I did end up using, as you can see, very lightly in like the jewelry chain, a little bit in the hair, and a little bit on her necklace and stuff. Um, but this was so fun to paint. It was so different than how I normally tackle things as far as colors and workflow go and stuff like that. And in the end, I'm just actually pretty thrilled with how it came out. Um, I think this figure looks super cool. I'll probably continue to touch it up a little more. Um, but all in all, it was uh, a lot of fun to paint for sure. Um, and here's everything I did over VinciCon. Uh, I would say it was a very productive weekend. It was a weekend where I finally got to get away and focus just on painting, recharge the batteries. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing what everybody was working on, hearing all these uh, guys have a fun conversation. Um, as I said, this one's a little different. Like, I didn't obviously record myself doing this. It was more just for fun for painting these things. But don't worry, we'll be back to normal tutorials next week. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions or comments, drop those down below. Tell me which project you thought was the coolest that everybody was working on. I very much want to know. Uh, and check out all those guys on their socials and their channels if you haven't already. They're all linked below. But uh, if you want to support the channel, don't forget down below there's affiliate links where you can do so. It doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money. Uh, great way to pick up all your hobby supplies that really helps the channel. There's also, speaking of Uncle Adam in this video, hey, guess what? The, the skirmish games I write with him, the books, those are all down in the comments below. Check out all those games, including our newest game, uh, which just recently launched, our, our newest zine, Snarl, which comes out every year, which has a new game in it and supplements for our existing games. There's also, uh, of course, uh, my Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.